From its very founding, the legislature directed that the University of North Dakota School of Medicine and Health Sciences would be established primarily for the purpose of meeting the health care needs of its people. This is the opportune time here in North Dakota to educate the future generations of physicians for not only North Dakota, but the nation and beyond. To make the dream of a new building of a reality, it took a lot of people and a lot of hard work. This is an event for the entire state of North Dakota. We need to move into what it takes to prepare for the generations ahead. We're celebrating today a transformational change for UND, your School of Medicine and Health Sciences, the region, and the state of North Dakota. There's a huge and growing need for healthcare professionals in this state. How better to meet the needs than training them right here at the University of North Dakota. We are witnessing today is the latest, most visible, and I would say the grandest expression of that covenant between a state and its people. Please welcome the UND Vice President for Health Affairs and Dean of the School of Medicine and Health Sciences, Dr. Joshua Wynn. Good evening again. I know that some of you are still having dinner and some are having dessert and some have finished, but we thought we would get the program underway but please continue your meals and uh, enjoy the rest of the evening. On June 12th, 2013, we had the first of several town hall meetings when students, faculty, and staff from the UND School of Medicine and Health Sciences community came together to start the planning for the new building that culminated a short three years later in this magnificent facility we are now enjoying. The theme that we used for the planning process was coming together, since one of the main reasons we needed a new building was the need to bring together several departments that were scattered across campus and have uh, them join us in one location with the other departments in the school. Coming together truly is one of the core themes that runs through our various programs and offerings, where the faculty in this new building can train the interprofessional healthcare teams necessary for patient care. So what I would like to thank and recognize the many, many people and groups who work together to make the dream of a new building a reality. I would ask the guests to stand when I call their name and ask you to join me in recognizing them. First of all are the many faculty and staff who devoted many collective hours to help design and then transition into the new building. Overseeing the entire process was our building committee. I'd like to ask the members of our building committee to stand, including Chair Randy Aiken, Judy Solberg, and Drs. John Allen, Joy Dorsher, Malik Kotba, Jonathan Geiger, Colin Combs, Gwen W. Hallis, Stephen Light, and Tom Moore. <laughs> Our school family worked harmoniously and came together with the rest of the UND campus. 
and UND is one of 11 campuses in the university system, and we came together with the North Dakota University System and the State Board of Higher Education. Approval and funding for the building came from the North Dakota Legislature, and I would ask all the members in attendance to please rise for us to acknowledge them. With us tonight are, as far as I know, and there may be others, so please stand if you're here, Senators Ray Holmberg, Judy Lee, Connie Triplett, and Representatives Rich Becker and Dr. Alan Fair. This building literally would not be here were it not for the coming together of our architects and construction manager and contractors. Please join me in thanking them all, especially Jim Galloway, Whitney Martin, Michael Hedrick, Robert Novak, Brenda Norris, Brad Hendrickson, Bob Levy, and Mike Schaefer. Our School of Medicine and Health Sciences Advisory Council came together with the school to formulate and endorse the Healthcare Workforce Initiative that culminated in this building. Please join me in welcoming the members of the Advisory Council and Chair Dave Molman. There are 145 medical schools in the United States, and only a minority, 27, are like us and are community-based. That means that we rely on non-full-time university physicians and other healthcare providers from the, across the state who volunteer their time to teach our students. Thus, many North Dakotan physicians uh, join forces with the school's full-time faculty to teach our students. This is yet another way where North Dakota leads the nation. A larger proportion of physicians in our state serve as our voluntary faculty than do physicians in any other state in the nation. Two out of three. Would all of the voluntary community-based physicians in the audience please rise? The building also exemplifies the coming together of the art and science of medicine. Just as we endeavor to produce healthcare providers who combine knowledge with wisdom, this building combines the science of health with the humanistic side of medicine as evidenced by the many works of art that adorn the building. Many thanks go to Professor Art Jones, the chair of the UND Department of Art and Design, and his colleagues for lending us these wonderful pieces. Please help me thank Art and his colleagues. An important relationship that I'd like to highlight is the public-private partnership that is evident throughout the building. On the tours earlier today, you undoubtedly noticed the roughly three dozen named spaces in the building where we recognize private donors to the UND Foundation for the benefit of the school. Why are private donations so important? To improve the student experience, largely through scholarship support to lower student debt. Even though our costs are among the lowest in the nation and the region, our students used to have above normal educational debt. But through the generosity of our donors, we have been able to reduce their cumulative debt from well above to well below the national average. A list of donors and the name spaces honoring their generosity are listed in the program that was distributed at the ribbon cutting ceremony earlier today. 
They are also listed on the digital signage that is available throughout the building. But I'd like to acknowledge four in particular. First is Dr. Marla Shu, who is a surgical oncologist and whose generous donation supports medical student scholarship. The lobby is named for her. Thank you, Marlis. The second is in honor of the late Dr. Charles H. Fee, a revered family medicine physician. The auditorium where we had our ribbon cutting ceremony was named for him. Well, Charles, Charles Fee's daughter, Carlene uh, Goring, and her husband, Charles, please rise so we can acknowledge your generous gift. And by the way, let me mention that we have a, a, a satellite seating area over on the other side of the lobby because the turnout was so wonderful tonight. So some of the people who are standing are actually over in the other lobby of the building. The next gift that I'd like to acknowledge, especially tonight, came from a long-standing member of the UND family and former Associate Dean for Student Affairs and Admissions. That office is now named for her in honor of her generous donation in support of medical student scholarships. Will Judy Demers please rise? And the last donation that I will highlight tonight is from Dr. David and Lola Monson, who endowed a chair currently held by Dr. Rick Van Eck. The Monson's extraordinarily generous gift supports student education, and their contribution will re be remembered by the naming of one of our learning communities in their honor. David and Lola. Finally, I would like to acknowledge the extraordinary executive team that I am honored to work with each and every day. They not only keep the school and its programs running, but in their spare time, they help to orchestrate the design and the construction of the building, the move into it, and tonight's celebration. I am so very proud of them. I would like to, to ask each to rise as, they, as I call their name. Please join me in thanking, first of all, Dr. Gwen W. Hallis, Senior Associate Dean for Education. <laughs> Randy Aiken, Associate Dean for Administration and Finance and Chair of our Building Committee. Dr. Mark Basson, Associate Dean for Medicine. Dr. Tom Moore, Associate Dean for Health Sciences. Dr. Joy Dorsher, Associate Dean for Student Affairs and Admissions. From our Office of Alumni, uh, 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 easy for me to say, right? From our Office of Alumni and Faculty Affairs, uh, Director Jessica Sobolik. <laughs> Dave Miedema, the Senior Development Officer for the school. And I believe the next three are seated in the satellite area, but my chief of staff, Judy Solberg. <laughs> Administrative officer, Lori Sanis. And Jeanette Grattan, our administrative assistant.
I would also uh, like to th acknowledge the outstanding dedication, hard work, and wonderful contributions of Terry Nelson, Jean Altapeter, and Susan Carlson. And most of all, let's thank the students. They helped in the design and planning process, and more importantly, the building was designed for them to engage interprofessionally and to learn in the best environment we could design and provide to the students. The UND School of Medicine and Health Sciences of today rests on the educational foundation laid by those who came before. Please join me in recognizing Dr. Tom Johnson, Dean of the School from 1977 to 1988, and Bill Harwood, son of the late Dr. Ted Hardwood, who was Dean from 1953 to 1973. Thus, in multiple ways, this building is the coming together of different people and groups, but with a common goal, that of providing the optimal environment for the education of health professionals, the discovery of new knowledge that leads to an improvement in the quality of the lives of North Dakotans, and the delivery of service to the people of this state. This building and what it represents show that even people with different backgrounds views and approaches can work together harmoniously and productively for the common good. Coming together means that we recognize our different strengths and use them for the good of the citizens of North Dakota. For that, I thank all of you. Our guest speaker tonight, Dr. Darrell G. Kirch, will further explore the theme of coming together in his presentation that is entitled, The Power of Community. Dr. Kirch is president and CEO of the Association of American Medical Colleges, or AAMC, which represents the nation's medical schools, teaching hospitals, and academic societies. A distinguished physician, educator, and medical scientist, Dr. Kirch speaks and publishes wisely on the need for transformation in the nation's healthcare system and how academic medicine can lead change in medical education, biomedical research, and patient care. Before becoming AAMC president, Dr. Kirch served as the dean and academic health system leader of two institutions, the Medical College of Georgia and the Penn State Milton S. Hershey Medical Center. He co-chaired the Liaison Committee on Medical Education, the accrediting body for U.S. medical schools, and now serves as chair of the Washington Higher Education Secretariat and is on the board of directors of the American Council on Education. Dr. Kirch also is a member of the National Academy of Medicine. A psychiatrist and clinical neuroscientist by training, Dr. Kirch began his career at the National Institutes of Mental Health becoming the, active, the acting scientific director in 1993 and receiving the Outstanding Medi Service Medal of the United States Public Health Service. A native of Denver, he earned his undergraduate and medical degrees from the University of Colorado. Please join me with a warm North Dakota welcome for our guest speaker tonight, Dr. Darrell Kirch. Dr. Kirch. Well, <clears throat> it is not easy being the after-dinner speaker, so I will be mercifully brief. But um, the things Josh mentioned about me are true, but to just round out the picture. So I grew up in Colorado. My father uh, grew up on a farm in Oklahoma, and my mother grew up on a farm in South Dakota. And now I live and work in Washington. I can't tell you how nice it is to be somewhere where people treat each other decently. You know, it's... Maybe I could just disappear here, not go back, and you'd all cover for me. Um, 
I've been here now three times. Uh, my first trip here was 10 years ago. It actually was before I became the president at the AMC. I was still dean of Penn State. And I had the honor of being the chair of the accreditation committee that was visiting the School of Medicine. And uh, I remember that visit very vividly for three reasons. One I already mentioned, it's just how civil and kind people are here. It, uh, it just uh, really takes your breath away. The second reason I remember it was I did not know that it could snow sideways. <laughs> I, it was a March visit, and I don't, I don't know where, the, the snow must fall somewhere east in Minnesota, but it wasn't falling here, it was just blowing sideways. And the third thing I remember is uh, being in the, the former medical school building and walking around the building and saying, I wonder how many more years they're going to be able to scrape out of this building. <laughs> because uh, as, as great as it was, and as much of a landmark as it was, it was really showing its age then. OK, so fast forward then uh, nine more years. And I was here in 2015 and had the honor of being the white coat ceremony speaker for the class that was starting that year. And I'll return to that in a minute. That was a wonderful experience at the Alaris Center. Um, I forgot to bring my swimsuit. I didn't know there was a water park, too. Uh, but that was a wonderful event. And then this is my third visit. And last night, I, I had the privilege of, just when I got in, of coming right to the, the overall university awards dinner. And uh, in addition to people here being civil, considerate, uh, what I found out is there's this incredible loyalty, and you see that in most alumni of a university. But what you don't see most places is a sense of genuine affection for the university, for what it means for the state, and for the alumni, what it meant in their lives. And, and that was really a treat for me to sit in the midst of that dinner and, and see how palpable that was. So when I was that white coat speaker uh, 18 months ago, uh, my talk was uh, titled, Entering the Pro Medicine, Entering the Profession, But Remembering the Person. And what that talk really focused on is something that I feel very deeply, which is that the, uh, the special element in the health professions is the connection one makes with a patient uh, with their story, uh, with their values, and how if you don't make that connection, you really aren't caring for them, you're simply delivering care. That it, the caring is centered on the human relationship. And uh, that was 18 months ago. In the 18 months that have transpired, uh, you know, I, I hope it doesn't quite hit you here the way it hits you if you live in Washington, D.C. in the epicenter. But I've really felt concerned about our nation losing sight of the human connection. You know, whatever our political leanings are, uh, this has not been an election that I think has brought out what Abraham Lincoln would call our better angels. Uh, it's brought out in, in contrast, I think, an unfortunate amount of incivility and uh, division that threatens to tear us apart. And it's caused me to wonder what is going to pull us together. You know, thank goodness we only have four weeks to go. If somebody could freeze me and thaw me out on November 9th, uh, that would be fine. But on November 9th, however the, the election plays out, uh, we, have, we have a nation that needs to find its level again, that needs to find its, its bearings again. I, uh, I don't know how many of you have read the book by David Brooks. David Brooks is a conservative political thinker, uh, 
New York Times columnist, and he wrote a recent book called The Road to Character. And I really am fascinated by the way he thinks about our nation and our values. And very recently, since that book, he wrote a column, and it was called uh, One Neighborhood at a Time. And I want to read you a quote from the column, because I think it speaks directly to where we are today and what you're doing here today with the College of Medicine and Health Sciences. So Dr. Brooks said, what is the right level to pursue social repair? The nation may be too large, the individual is too small, the community is the right level. And I think he really pinpointed what you've been about, because on each of the visits I've made to North Dakota, what I've seen is community being built and social bonds being built. I would argue in the way only a university, a great university and a great university academic health sciences program can do. So I want to just remind you tonight as you go home of the three communities you're building here. The first one is a community of giving. Um, another writer that I've been really uh, intrigued by is, is named Jared Bernstein. And he says the problem in America is that we're struggling between being wits, W-I-T-T-S, or yo-yos, Y-O-Y-O-S. <laughs> So what are wits? Wits are pe people who believe we're in this together, and yo-yos are people who believe you're on your own. I think the construction of this building, but more than that, the driving concept behind this Academic Health Sciences Center shows a state full of wits at their very best. You've exemplified how you're all in this together. I, I heard at the uh, ribbon cutting ceremony earlier, I heard how you cut through all of the usual political forces that sometimes divide people. You had a governor, you had a legislature, you had a higher ed commission, you had an advisory board, you had the university and its faculty. You cut through all that and you said, we're in this together and you got this building funded. The other way I've seen, as I walked around the building today and I looked at those names on the various rooms, is the way you've demonstrated that we're in this together by your donor support for the university. You know, um, Josh mentioned the hard work that they've been engaged in to, to bring down the cost of attending and the debt for medical students. Sadly, just before I came here, I saw the, the latest information, the average indebtedness of graduating U.S. medical students this last May was $190,000. So they're walking out the door with just their medical degree and $190,000 in debt. You have driven your average debt much lower than that. And at a time when you, if you look at all the US medical schools and how much debt has been growing, one, two, three, four, five, six percent a year, guess who's at the bottom because the debt of their students has actually been decreasing? You're at the bottom, and believe me, this is one place where you want to be at the bottom. <laughs> you, <laughs> Incredibly, what other schools have tried but haven't done, you've been bringing down year after year the debt of your medical students. Uh, as somebody who never could have made it through medical school without scholarship support, um, I know what that means. So your community of giving speaks for itself. It speaks in the buildings and it is speaking in generation after generation of students you produce. The second community that you may or may not appreciate is the community of learning you're creating in this building. 
And again, I don't know if you know this, but there is nothing like this elsewhere in the United States. So um, maybe, maybe it's my age, but I think more and more about being a patient as opposed to being a doctor. <laughs> And some of you have probably had the experience where you see a specialist, perhaps, but they don't talk to your primary care doctor, and then they don't talk to the next specialist, and it feels like your care is disconnected. You know, what we know so plainly is that good care delivers a high level of interprofessional teamwork. But why we thought for so many years that we could educate the occupational therapist here, the physician assistant here, the MD here, uh, the other health professions up here, and then throw them into the clinic and say, okay, be a team. Why we thought that was going to work, I have no idea. But by virtue of creating a main street and communities on that main street, so in this building, you actually are designating communities where all these health professions are coming together and I believe that what you're doing is forming social bonds that actually create the foundation for those people being true teams in the healthcare situation. I mean, that's really an extraordinary thing. Um, you know, uh, if some oil worker uh, out in the fields, um, uh, some student athlete here at UND, uh, suffers a severe injury, you need to have medicine, primary care, physical therapy, occupational therapy, athletic training. It all needs to come together, and you're creating the ability for that to happen here. So after your community of giving and your community of learning, the third community you're building here is really one of caring. Now, I know there was a... Um, health workforce initiative that was established that would, provided the driving rationale for this building, but that, that, that sounds too conceptual for me because workforce sounds like numbers and analytics. Um, let me tell you what the problem is, and I know this problem is bigger for North Dakota than for many states. So I'm a proud card-carrying member of the baby boom, okay? The silver tsunami is what we call ourselves now. <clears throat> there are 10,000 baby boomers turning 65 every day. Every day we are converting doctors from patients to, to patients. You know, the percentage of doctors over 65 is gre actually greater than the population. You can't have this entire wave of Americans entering the period of aging with the medical problems that may come with it and not have a crisis. We need to grow our health professions to meet that. So behind the, the policy language of the Health Workforce Initiative, it is an aging population with the orthopedic problems, the cardiologic problems, the cancer problems, the need for just good, solid primary care that is creating this dire need for this state to do what you've done here and for the rest of the nation to respond. If we ignore this, this isn't theoretical. The baby boom was already born, it's already here. We're all aging. And it's going to create a demand that as a nation we need to respond to and that as a state you've responded to in a better way than, than I've seen almost anywhere in the country. So those really are my simple messages. Um, I watch the same uh, news channels you do. I see the rancor, the divisiveness that's characterized the national discussion this last year. And uh, I think it's really unfortunate, but actually I have this core sense of optimism that all of that may just be noise. <laughs> because when it comes down to getting things done, to creating communities, despite the national noise, 
as David Brooks said, at the community level, you can really get things done. You've done it with a community of givers. You are creating career-long bonds within a community of learners. And the community of caring that uh, will last for decades to come in this state uh, will redound to your credit. Uh, I'm so glad to be here. Uh, I'm so glad that it's not snowing. <laughs> but most of all, uh, I'm proud to have, even if it's at a distance, I'm proud to have an association with the North Dakotans who have really done something truly extraordinary. Please bask in the glow of that. Thank you all for having me tonight. Daryl, thank you so much for those uh, thoughtful and actually inspiring comments. You know, one of the things I like to say about your School of Medicine and, and Health Sciences is that we're a community-based medical school, and our community is all of North Dakota, so thank you all. At homecoming, it's a tradition to recognize milestones. Tonight is no different. This year, we are celebrating 25 years of our Department of Sports Medicine. For many years, it was a division of our Department of Family and Community Medicine, but just recently was made into its own department. The department's faculty, staff, and students support all UND athletic teams, and the athletes would not be successful without them. Here to acknowledge those who 25 years ago made the division, now a department a reality, Department Chair Steve Westering. Steve? I'll get to those in a second. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you to the School of Medicine and Health Sciences for recognizing us tonight and the support over the last 25 years. It's been uh, amazing. Uh, also, thank you to the faculty. Your hard work uh, is always appreciated and the students for their hard work, which leads to the success of our program. But I do want to recognize a few people tonight. Uh, but to do that, I actually have to tell a story. And before I tell the story, you got to know a couple of things. Back when they were talking about developing the Division of Sports Medicine, Ed James was the dean, and he was an avid University of Oregon Ducks fan. The second part that you need to know was Jim Rudd, who was the head athletic trainer at the time, uh, was a pretty shrewd negotiator, and he had pretty good timing. So the story goes that basically, as this concept, this idea of sports medicine within the med school started, Jim called in a favor and got an Oregon Ducks helmet. <laughs> There's always some rivalry, right? So what happens is, is as with anything that's an idea or concept that's going to become something, it has to get voted on through committees and everything else. So just before a committee uh, hearing and a vote, Jim presents Dean James with this Oregon Ducks helmet. <laughs> so what happens is the dean is enamored with this helmet, and he is basically standing there with a bunch of people around him, suit and tie, but he loves it so much that he actually puts it on. It falls down below his eyeballs. It's sitting on his shoulders, and the only thing that can be seen is this big smile. So when the vote comes around, basically it was unfair to begin with. Because when the dean goes, okay, we're going to vote on this new division of sports medicine thing, we're going to do this, right? We're going to do this, right? Up and down the, up and down the, uh, the voting, there wasn't a chance that it wasn't going to pass, according to legend. But tonight, in the spirit of the helmet, I am going to give a few of them away today. Um, so first of all, I'm going to recognize three people. The first one is Dr. William Mann. Dr. Mann has been a team physician since 1985 with us, but he is also, his idea behind sports medicine was the fact that 
the residents who are coming into the residency didn't have enough musculoskeletal experience in which when they ended, they would have 30% of their clientele would be seeing them for. So basically, his idea was let's match these people who are running around campus banging themselves up with the residents and get their skills up there. And I know those people who know Bill, he had an opinion at the time and that was his opinion. <laughs> so unfortunately, Dr. Mann could not be with, here with us tonight, but I would like to give him a round of applause. <laughs> the second person is, was the athletic director at the time, Gino Gasparini. Gino was trying to find a way to take care of his athletes better. And in the scope of things, it's kind of hard because you have an idea how you want to develop something, but you also have to relinquish control. I was explaining to Gino earlier that the NCAA has now come out because of all the pressures behind college athletics and basically said, you need to have healthcare providers, athletic trainers, team physicians reporting up to, up to healthcare providers. It shouldn't be decisions based on other things. It needs to be healthcare. So, Gino, I know that, that your insight uh, helped that, but you were only about 23 years ahead of your time at that point in time, because that was just in 2014 that they announced that. So come up and get your helmet. The third person was instrumental from the beginning. Um, his support over the last 25 years has been outstanding. Um, he has done a great job for us. Um, I don't know how an Italian hockey coach, a Scottish doctor, and a cattle rancher from New York can give him an idea, and he goes, yeah, I think that's pretty good. But uh, uh, much like what I feel about this building without him, it wouldn't be here. Um, but I would like to give the last helmet to Randy Aiken. Unfortunately, another person who was a key player in the development of the program could not be here tonight. This man came to UND in 1974 as a graduate student. He left but returned in 1989 to become the head athletic trainer and eventually a program director. Over the next 25 years, until he passed away in 2014, he was a mentor to athletic training students, student athletes, many sports medicine professionals, including many of the current faculty. He was a pioneer in the field of sports medicine. Although Jim could not be with us tonight, his wife Elaine and daughter Jennifer Rinkley are with us tonight, and I'm proud to announce that enough money has been raised to endow the Jim Rudd Memorial Scholarship, and the, for the first time in 2017-2018, the Department of Sports Medicine will give out its first scholarship to an athletic training student.
thank you for your support. And at the end of this session, could the sports medicine people get hop over here? We'd like to get a picture. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. I would now like to turn the podium over to Jessica Sobolik, Director of Alumni and Community Relations, who will oversee the recognition of past graduates of the school. Jessica. This year's milestone graduates are those who graduated 20, 25, 30, 40, 50, or 60 years ago. Before I read the honorees' names, I'd like to give a quick, and I emphasize quick, overview of our 111-year history. The school was formed in 1905, which is why our cafe downstairs is named Cafe 1905. In the early years, the School of Medicine offered two-year BS medicine degrees, four-year medical technology degrees, and graduate degrees in anatomy, biochemistry, microbiology, physiology and pharmacology, and pathology. In 1976, 40 years ago, we graduated our first four-year MD class. In the mid-90s, we became the School of Medicine and Health Sciences, and today we offer eight degree programs for MDs, PTs, OTs, physician assistants, athletic trainers, biomedical sciences, public health, and the med tech program that is now medical laboratory science. So we'd like to recognize and congratulate members of the classes of 1956, 66, 76, 86, 91, and 96, and we'll do so in reverse chronological order. As I call each class, please come up on stage for a picture with Dean Wynn. For everyone else, please do not withhold your applause. <laughs> At UND, we're proud of our most recent national championship men's hockey team. So those who are recognized tonight, including our athletic training alumni who were recognized earlier, will receive this national, national hockey championship banner, which will be mailed to you in the coming weeks. We'll get started here shortly. From the class of 1996, Mary Coleman of Grand Forks, North Dakota. There she is. And Mary earned her Master of Science degree in medical technology. Mary has been a faculty member of our medical laboratory science program for more than 40 years now. Okay. Next is the class of 1991. Cindy Flom Melland and David Relling, both of Grand Forks, are here somewhere. Come on up. <laughs> Cindy and Dave are representing their BSPT class. Dave is now the chair of our Department of Physical Therapy, and Cindy is an associate professor for the department. Also for the class of 1991 is Susan Nissen of Northfield, Minnesota. She's representing her MD class today. Moving on to the class of 1986, we have Tom Moore of Grandin, North Dakota. He earned his PhD in physiology. Tom, are you out there? I know you're out there. You know, while Tom was earning his PhD, he was also serving as chair of UND's physical therapy department at the time. I'm not sure how he had time to do both of those. He's now associate dean for health sciences here and continues his role of professor in our physical therapy department. The next group of names are from the MD class of 1986. 
and I'll read through them, and as I read the names, please all come up. Karen Erstad of Minot, North Dakota, Stephen Burnt of Fargo, North Dakota, Victoria Brond of Northbrook, Illinois, Paul and Janine Carson of Fargo, North Dakota, Lori DeFrance of Hermantown, Minnesota, Mark Caponin of Grand Forks, North Dakota, Stephen Lynn of Fargo, North Dakota, Gwen Martin of Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin, and Robert Olson of Madison, Wisconsin. From the class of 1976, we have representatives from a few different groups. Steve Strinden of Fargo, North Dakota is representing his BS Med class. Pamela Summer of Fargo, North Dakota is representing her medical technology class, and I hope they're coming up here as I'm reading this. And Dr. Robert Arusel of Fargo, North Dakota is representing his MD class. Now, Dr. Arusel, I believe, had to sneak out a little bit early, uh, flying to Indonesia tomorrow, so he had some other things he had to do before he left. Um, but Dr. Arusel was the first graduate to receive an MD degree from UND in a ceremony at the Chester Fritz Auditorium, which we're still doing today. And uh, UND President Tom Clifford was the keynote speaker for that ceremony. I missed one. Wait, wait. <laughs> Teresa Shervin, are you here? And will you please come up and take a picture with us? Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll find out later how she snuck in on me. Okay, we have three individuals from the BS Med class of 1966, so our 50-year graduates. Wow. David Mersey of Tucson, Arizona, Terry Torgenrud of University Place, Washington, and Frank Vasey of Tampa, Florida. Will you all please come up to the stage? <laughs> and last but certainly not least, from the BS Med class of 1956, John Lambie of Grand Forks, North Dakota, our 60-year graduate. Thank you so much, Jessica, and congratulations to all of the graduates. I'd also like to thank uh, Kristen Peterson in Jessica's office for helping to make the arrangements for the 400 of you who were kind enough to come out and spend your evening with us. So let's thank Je uh, Jessica and Kristen. Most importantly, thanks to all of you. All of you have contributed in some way, uh, some important way, 
to the success of the School of Medicine and Health Sciences and to our commitment to help uh, provide for the health of the people of North Dakota and the region through bo both workforce development, the discovery of new knowledge, and service, and service that entails not only the science of medicine, but the relationship on a personal level. So I'd like to thank all of you. Thank you for joining us on this incredible day, and thank you for your support of your UND School of Medicine and Health Sciences. Thank you. Please feel free to continue to mingle and visit with your colleagues and enjoy the festivities. Thank you and have a wonderful evening. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>